Okay, now we're going to get into something of a simpler episode, but it's also much more tragic. Uh, we had stopped at Doxis, which is 127 AD in Paul, and the corresponding text to that ended here, down here in Matthew 24, verse 6. We're still in verse 6, but the right way to parse, and sometimes Anon the Nomenon does it that way and sometimes he doesn't, is by clause. And the reason why is to dissect when these kinds of things occur. When you get a 7 or a 14 within something that isn't otherwise 70. See, 32 and 18 is adding up to 50, and I've got to cover why, because that's really important. But when you do it by clause, like I did it up here in Ephesians, you see the trend or the plot um, of the meter because it's a technique both in Hebrew and in Greek, but especially in Greek. What they like to do is they like to um, make their, what do you want to call it, their own you know, native Greek meter in clauses. Now, I don't know if the Greeks got it from the Hebrews or the Hebrews got it from the Greeks because they both were kind of intertwined early on. But the Hebrew does it by clause, but somewhere or somebody who put together the Masoretic text managed to do it in such a way that you could do it by verse. That doesn't work so well in the New Testament. You have to really go by clause in order to find these little bits where it's sevening within something that's not otherwise accumulatively adding up to seven. And that matters because if you're doing a timeline, specific periods are being marked out. Like for example, up here in the Greek, this all adds up to 28, but you'll notice this is verse 6, all right? So part of, you know, because the, the versification was invented by the College of Paris in the 1100s AD, so it isn't native to the text. So the text has got its own cadence and its own, its own as it were, meter pattern. And you're looking for that, because the sevening of the paragraphs is dividing into doctrinally significant paragraphs and each of the numbers tells you something. A 28 means a lot of growth. Okay, it does kind of tend to mean a lot of growth under pressure because it's 21 plus 7. 21's origin is a metaphor that's actually literal for the time that Jacob spent working for his two wives as a slave under um, Laban. Okay, slave, the word slave in the Bible, translated slave, isn't always real slavery as we understand it. It's indenture, it's contract labor. You contract to be somebody's slave for a certain period of time, which means that they pay you, but in a sense they also own rights to you. It's, it's stronger than our employment contracts today, but very similar. So Laban you know, Jacob was supposed to work for seven years in order to get Rachel as a wife. So he enslaved himself to Laban for seven years to get Rachel, not Rachel, yeah, Rachel as a wife. But Laban tricked him and he got, he got Leah instead. So he worked an extra seven years. Um, he got, he ended up getting Rachel right away afterwards after the trick was discovered. But he still had to work the extra seven years to get Rachel because he'd already slept with Leah. Thinking that it was Rachel, he was so drunk. So, then Laban tricked him again, and he ended up staying 21 years. So, when you see a 21 versification, uh, not versification, but meter in the Bible, that's what it's talking about. It's reminding you of that story. So, it means growth as a slave of God. Growth in indenture to God. Growth as a slave under this world, okay? The extra seven means that you're growing even more but you're under pressure okay and that's what we're looking at here a comparison of the pressure and again the text in Paul stops at Doxis for 127 AD that was here in verse 6a of Matthew 24 and now we're looking at the second clause in that same verse it's interesting how the, the verses are tracking their verse numbers, but that isn't in the original text. That just happens to be a coincidence. And our, our text for this episode is Horate me toeste. That could be badly pronounced Greek. I'm, I'm trying to do it right. Horate 
me treste. Okay, now what does that mean? Horate means look, be alert, watch, witness. It's a command. Okay? And then me means do not. And then treste, um, it, they usually translate it be frightened, but that's really not all it is. Don't be troubled, don't be disturbed, don't get um, fixated. You know, don't. He, he's playing on the sound of horate and troete, okay, but it's troeste. All right, he's playing on the sound. In other words, when you look at something, you're going to tend to be all involved in it and fixated and <laughs> don't do that. That's what he's saying here. Now, he's, it's, it's a separate clause. It's seven syllables. That seven is always a tribulation number. It, it, it doesn't only have that meaning, but he's saying pressure, trouble, real bad trouble is going to occur now. Between, and the years here are between 127 and 134. And later on, of course, in history, because Christ is talking 30 AD, um, in 132, to 135 AD we have what's called the Bar Kokhba Rebellion in Jerusalem. Okay, and this is going to result in Hadrian, who, who's the, still the emperor at this time, he's already been building up for 10 or 15 years his anti-Semitism, and on top of that, the guy is developing some kind of, um, oh, how do you want to call it, Psycho psychopathic complex that he wants to just kill everybody. All right, and he's got his right-hand man is a guy named Antoninus who's going to end up being the next emperor. And by the time that Hadrian dies in 138, by the time that he dies, he has already been wanting to kill everybody in the Senate. So his anti-Semitism drove him nuts. Okay? I'm not saying he didn't have like a cause in the beginning to be upset at the Jews because they were rebels, but it was more than that. And of course, he, as far as we know, he didn't believe in Christ. And so when you're anti-Semitic, that's just the kiss of death, okay? Your brain turns to mush. You go mentally ill. I've had people in my own family where I saw it happen, okay? That's why those Muslims get all upset over a stupid Danish cartoon. Because they're anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism rots the brain. So that's what's going to happen here, is during the period between 127 and 134 begins the start of, but not yet the end of, although it could be the end of, depending on how you count the fiscal, the Bar Kokhba Rebellion. You can go look that up. Bar, B-A-R, Kokhba, K-O-C-H-B-A. Some of them might spell it slightly differently. Now that resulted in the raising, R-A-Z-I-N-G, of Jerusalem and whatever was left of the temple ruins and a whole new city was ordered to be built on it called Aeolia Capitolina, Aelia Capitolina, A-E-L-I-A, Capitolina. And the Jews were barred from Jerusalem. They weren't going to be even allowed to go there. They were allowed on the Tishba Av, which is the ninth of Av. I think it's the ninth. Is it the seventh or the ninth? Of, of Av to go and um, you know mourn the loss of the temple okay this is the fifth right now my brain is on I'm so tired I've done so many of these videos I can't think too too well all right but the point is is that this is the seed of that result now in Greek what they like to do is they like to give you part of the answer but not the whole answer because they're expecting you to fill in the rest that's a sort of attic drama thing that they consider to be real elegant. Don't say too much. Wish I'd learned that. So that's what's going on here. Christ isn't saying the whole story. He's saying, look, watch, be on the alert, be careful, but don't get upset about this. All right, and it's clause, it's, it's in its own clause, and it's seven syllables, so it's telling you it's tribulation grade. All right, you got the official tribulation that the last seven years prior to, you know, the millennium. But this, you know, there are always troubles that are, you know, just as bad. And that's the character of church's time because we're not supposed to be here. So, Paul's going to link up this text here. This is really important. Teis charitu sautoi. Autu. Sorry, can hardly see it. 
this this harito sautu. Grace, he, you know, glory. Well, this is the gl word for glory. Doses. Okay, this harito sautu. His glory, his grace, rather. When you're in tribulation, when you're in trouble, when you're in a state of stress, you need to remember God's grace. He'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. And you know, you're under so much stress, you can't think more than that. He'll get you through it. He'll get you through it. And don't ever feel bad about that. Because Christ himself, when he's on the cross, he's screaming. Because he's being impugned with our sins. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. What he's doing when he's screaming like that is he's trying to drown out the temptation to give in to rejecting the sin or using his God power to stop it. He's claiming the Bible verses in Psalm 22 when he's screaming because that's one of the one of the phrases in it. And he's using that to drown out any temptation to sin. So that's what you end up doing. His grace, his grace, his grace, his grace, his grace. While you try to get through the moment and then the moment you're either hurt or full of grief or upset for one reason or another. So you see how Paul is tying that. This is the solution to. Duesite. See? Horate means you got to know. You got to look at it. You got to look it straight in the face. But don't get all fixated. Don't get all upset. Don't get all frightened. Don't get all worried. And the, how are you going to how are you going to do that? Seriously. You know, when something's upsetting, it's upsetting. You should be upset. Okay, well, here's how. And Paul is addressing it right here. Okay? You just, keep, you just keep firing Bible like bullets at the problem. So you're drowning out your, you know, the temptation to get upset. So you see, Paul is still following the text very precisely. And he's covering the same period, except that he's you know, taking it to 133, this takes it to 134, but see the Bible fiscal years, the Bible Jews had two fiscal years. Our fiscal year basically runs from January to December. Okay, so January next begins a new year for us. If Christ is using that fiscal year here, it would be 134, okay? But if you're using a, a sacred calendar fiscal year, all right, then it would still be 133. See, because the sacred year calendar begins on the vernal equinox, which is three months later, or two months and three weeks. So you see, Paul is, is saying, look, no matter what, how you measure the fiscal year, this is what applies to this. And it's a very specific period of time. 127, say, to 134 on the Roman fiscal which is the same as our calendar. All right? Now that's really important because by using a seven, this is one of the main functions of a meter when it's a timeline. By using a seven and it's in a prophetic timeline, here you are in a certain period of history and if you had been taught, unfortunately we haven't been in the last 2,000 years, but if you had been taught the meter, you would know what time it was and you would know what year you were in and then you would know oh this is coming up in the next seven years from where I am and you would teach your children and your friends would talk about it and then when this time began you would know ooh seven I better get out of Dodge yeah and the one thing they had to remember and know and that's what Paul's doing here too he's saying hi when you get to 133 Christ age 133, which is 133 AD for all intents and purposes, you know, the adjustments I'm going to just leave out. When you get to that point, get out of Dodge, get out of Jerusalem. The Bar Kokhba rebellion lasts from 132 to 135. It would have just been starting in 133. If you were on the um, September autumnal equinox fix, fiscal, 133 began six months earlier, so then it would still be 132 on the sacred calendar, and you'd know, get out. You see what I'm getting at? They're playing the fiscal game. So no matter what fiscal year you're using, you know, get out of Dodge. Get out of Jerusalem. Because a lot of people died. It was horrible. Okay, really horrible time. 
The other thing is that, wow, look at this text when it's all in context. I mean, this is, one, this is 127 AD, but this is a phrase that, yeah, you could argue, well, it kind of stands alone considering the, the issue. But in context, it's like, oh, this is going to result in the praise to the glory of God. It's going to result in that. You're claiming that as a promise, and you need to claim it as a promise because those seven years are really, really bad. Teis hari to sao toi. Ao tu, sorry, I'm looking at it. Teis hari to sao tu. The screen isn't showing the you the way it really is in the text. Okay. It, it's a problem with the screen. Let's see if I can get it to go better. Now you can't, you still can't see it. The, the number's being blocked. The numbers blocking it, but that's actually you in the text, and it's pasted right. It just doesn't look right. Okay, so you got a seven-year period of flight, a seven-year period of war, a seven-year period of problems. Remember, he was talking up here about wars and rumors of wars. Well, it's going to heat up because what Hadrian's going to do is say, "Enough with you Jews. I'm just going to raise Jerusalem." Okay. And it takes, you know, the, the Bar Kokhba rebellion started in 132. It took a while to put it down. But who wants to be there in the middle of it? So, at the beginning of it, get up. And you got all this advanced warning if you knew how to read the meter as a timeline. That's what it's there for. Now, notice how Paul is giving you the antidote. You know, it says, don't be upset. Well, yeah, fine. But what are you going to do to belay your upset? Remember, it's His grace. And then you're depending on His grace to get you out of Dodge. Show you where to go. Show you what to do. Okay? So that was a pretty simple sample. But it also helps you to see why the meter is done as a timeline. Even though you can't predict the rapture, historical events are there to teach doctrine and to give particular individuals during those times a way to know how to read what time it is not for the purpose of predicting the rapture because you can't do that but for purpose of understanding what time you're living in and then we'll go forward with that in the next increment